To be a successful cold weather carp angler takes a lot of years to build it, to hone your skills and to gain the confidence because at the end of the day, the confidence is key. There really is nothing more rewarding than catching a huge carp in the middle of winter. You've gone through so many blank nights, it almost takes you by surprise. You almost can't believe that you're playing a fish. And when it turns out that it's a huge one, looking at it in the net is just the most incredible feeling. When the cameras are clicking, you're holding up that fish, you really can't feel the burn in your fingers anymore. It's just the most rewarding feeling ever. I think what I love most about my winter fishing is the fact that there's no one on the bank. I literally love the long, cold, crisp nights. Everybody else is at home. You're not expected to catch. You've got the whole place to yourself. I love the long nights. Everyone seems to think those long nights put people off. It gets dark early. But for me, it just brings the best out of me. I like to sit up late. I can never go to sleep at night. I'm often sitting up till one, two, three o'clock in the morning on a regular basis. I get a lot of people either text me or send me messages through like, you know, Instagram or social media. And they're always popping me a question. They know I'm sitting up at night in the winter. So for me, I think the thing I love most about it is no anglers. I love those cold, crisp, still nights. The fish are showing at night. And I also love the fact, believe it or not, I just hate mosquitoes. I love the fact there's no mosquitoes about. A few key things that will always keep you going through the winter. Obviously, I'm going to state the obvious. You need to be dry and warm. Clothing, thermal underwear, layer clothing, Keeping you warm is key. I couldn't live without my boots. I've got my Gore-Tex walking boots. My feet are dry and warm. And to be fair, I just love my Coleman stove roaring. I've always got a can of petrol, the Coleman stove, nice bit of food, keep yourself dry, warm, fed, and that Coleman roaring with a nice can of petrol. I couldn't live without it. There really is nothing more rewarding than catching a huge carp in the middle of winter. You've gone through so many blank nights, it almost takes you by surprise. You almost can't believe that you're playing a fish. And when it turns out that it's a huge one, looking at it in the net is just the most incredible feeling. Rolling up the net, picking the fish up and putting it on the mat when it's absolutely freezing cold. The mat has got ice on it, literally, you know, like frost and your hands are numb through the cold. Yet, when the cameras are clicking, you're holding up that fish, you really can't feel the burn in your fingers anymore. It's just the most rewarding feeling ever. A couple of my most memorable captures, I think, have got to start off with the one from Raysbury. It's my first 40 pounder I ever caught, called the Pug, a well-known history fish, as a lot of you will well know. This particular day, the lake was frozen solid, 120 acres frozen solid. I knew that afternoon that there was a weather change. Uh, there was going to be rain and wind coming in, and I thought if I could just get the rods out, or at least one of the rods on the spot, I knew the rain would fall on the ice and the wind would probably push in push the wind, push the, uh, the water onto the ice and, and, and chop it up and, you know, it, it would cut up the ice. That particular day, I put all my stuff in the boat and I loaded it up and I literally ploughed a, a, a channel through the ice out to the spot where I had caught these two fish previously. I lowered a rig and, and, and headed back to the swim 
where I was fishing it from. I had to literally chop a channel through the ice and holding the rod tip under the water so I could get the line through the, through the, through the floating ice, so to speak. Later that day, uh, the, the rain turned up, the wind turned up. I was on the windward bank, so you know the, the, the water lapping up against over the ice, over the top of the ice, it, it chopped the ice up. And that afternoon, I got, I got two, rod, two more rods out, but the, the, the particular rod that I put out whilst it was frozen, around about 20 past half three, it was later on in the afternoon, that rod I had a single bleep on. And I knew that from the previous two bites, it was single bleeps and I was onto one. And it was a single bleep, I think the bobbin pulled up half an inch and I just knew something was on. And I bent into that rod and sure enough, there was a fish on and, and a boat battle ensued. Funnily enough, like, as I say, the pug was the result of that amazing, amazing freakish capture. So that was probably my most memorable, my first 40 out of raised breed. The lake that day was frozen solid. I think there's been a fair few other ones, but I'll go with probably Bruno out of this particular lake that I'm sitting next to. It was around about late December in 2007 and it was a capture that helped me go on to, to win the Carp Angler of the Year competition that particular year, 2007-2008. It was in between Christmas and New Year. I got the rods out and the water conditions were absolutely freezing. Um, I can't remember the guy's name, but he, was a, he used to take the temperatures of the water religiously. And uh, it transpired afterwards that he said to a few of the lads, he said, oh, I don't know how John caught that fish that, that weekend or that, that, ta that time. He said, I took the water temperatures that day and I, I, don't, I don't get me, you know, don't quote me on it. I don't really take temperatures of water because if you're going to take temperatures of the water, the, you're kind of putting barriers up for yourself. And as I've said before, you've just got to keep on keeping on and do what you're doing. So that particular capture, I think, was a, a major one for me. Catching Bruno, it was like 47 pounds one of the last originals in Dinton White Swan. And I think those two captures are probably, probably my most momentous captures in the winter, I think.